We're going to get started, okay? All right. So, um, again, if you haven't tried the juice mix in the back, uh, by all means help yourself to that. Uh, that'll help you stay awake during this lecture. I hope to make it quick and interesting for you. Um, I'll just start off by asking you to turn off your cell phones if you have any. If you have any questions, feel free to just put up your hand and ask any time, okay? So the overview uh, to this topic of stress and adrenal issue, which I think is, a, is an epidemic in the 21st century, we're going to go through who I am, what this product line is about, why I developed it, and how you can use it with your customers. So first off, I've been a naturopathic doctor for 23 years. I've been practicing in Vancouver all those years. I pioneered in various therapies, intravenous ozone therapy, and other intravenous therapies. I'm the past president of the BC Naturopathic Association. I'm also the founder and the past chair of the Boucher Institute, which is uh, the second accredited naturopathic college in Canada uh, that was started in 2001. I specialize in chronic diseases, anti-aging medicine, um, Gerson anti-cancer therapy, detox programs, IV therapies, and so on. Um, the formulator and educator of uh, chronic health. Um, so in my practice, I see all kinds of different cases like uh, skin conditions, digestive problems, allergies, cardiovascular diseases, cancers, autoimmune diseases, and so on. Um, autoimmune is very interesting because it's, it's, a, it's an up-and-coming problem. Um, I attended a conference about three years ago, and Dr. Vijdani, um, who was a PhD, PhD in immunology, stated that about 75% of the population have autoimmune disease. Half are diagnosed, the other half don't even know they have it yet, uh, or that it's not diagnosed. And, um, and I think a lot of that, <clears throat> just as a reflection of you know, what's been going on in terms of toxic use and uh, toxic exposure and drug abuse and drug exposures and so on and so forth. And I think that um, you know, there, there needs to be a lot more sort of work in that area of formulations to help those people with those conditions, especially relating to the leaky gut and irritable bowel and dysbiosis problems. My own personal healing journey, and everyone has, I'm sure, your own stories that led you to the work that you do. Um, I basically grew up with uh, two different medical paradigms. My dad was a, a nurse in a hospital in Taiwan. My mom grew up in the countryside, was raised with Chinese herbs. And, uh, and so going through <coughs> the, the travels of to going to Australia and Brazil and different places before landing here, we all had our share of colds and flus. And every time the antibodies failed, the Chinese herbs that my mom would, would get us um, to use would help us. And consistently, a day or two days after using these very awful tasting herbs, <laughs> we got better. Um, and so growing up, I had that impression in my mind. And arriving here in Toronto, 1972, um, I just did it what every kid did, and that was to eat a standard American diet. Uh, so I had my <coughs> share of burgers and fries and white bread and cheesies and all mm -hmm. kinds of stuff, and then I developed variable bowel from that. And so going through high school and university, I suffered with terrible cramps and, and diarrhea. And uh, my doctor really couldn't help me. He scoped me from both sides and tried all kinds of meds on me, and I just didn't get any better. And uh, so going through university, the turning point was trying to decide whether I was going to do grad school, medical school, some other professions, and, and naturopathy sort of came up and uh, through an ad that my dad saw in the subway one day, and um, I thought, well, I'll give it a try, you know, and see how, how it goes, but mainly I wanted to see if it would help me with my ear bowel because I, I was really frustrated with it. Um, and lo and behold, after I changed my diet that first year, I, my irritable bowel was completely managed. I had no more pain, and inflammation, and diarrhea, and cramping, and so on. So that really made me a firm believer in naturopathy, and I uh, became very impassioned by that work. Um, another thing that happened to me in 88, that's kind of like me, back in 88, 92, I suffered two major bouts of adrenal collapse. Um, <clears throat> I was doing too much in school. At the time, uh, when I graduated in 1990, I came out and associated for a couple of years and I started my practice in 92. Um, just to give you one of those um, situations, in uh, 92, I opened up my practice and uh, I had 10 associate practitioners working with me. I was practicing seven days a week and four full-time staff at the front and uh, I just lost my brother to a car accident. I didn't take the time to grieve and I just was doing too much and so my my body just 
gave up. My adrenal glands completely dried up. And I didn't, I didn't know at the time what it was. I had this inflammation from my waist down. I looked like the elephant man. I was edematous, swelled, swelling, um, red, oozing stuff. And I just was scratching my legs all night long, couldn't sleep. And, uh, but now that I know, it's, you know it has to do with just not taking the time to rest and recover my adrenals. My cortisol levels are completely flatlined and uh, I had no anti-inflammatory capacity. So um, that gave me a, a real good understanding in this area and I think a, I'm a bit of an expert when it comes to adrenal fatigue because of that. Uh, Dr. Roy um, was probably one of my key mentors growing up. Um, going through uh, naturopathic medicine, he kind of recruited me and that's the reason why I came out west. Dr. Way was probably Canada's first holistic medical doctors, and um, he has a medical degree from the University of Montreal. He's a country doctor in the Algonquin area. He worked with Renee Casey for 25 years. Uh, in 1962, he lost his license because he was vocal against <coughs> fluoridation in the Greater Toronto area, and so he was treating this terminal cancer patient and lost her, and, and the college went after him and, and took his license away. Um, and after that, he started the at the naturopathic college, now called the Canadian College of Naturopathic Medicine, became an MD himself and started working with cancer patients. He also worked with Dr. Royal Lee. I don't know if many of you, do you, any of you know Dr. Royal Lee? He's probably one of the pioneers in nutrition and started um, a company called Standard Process, which you don't see here because of importation issues, but it's a, an American company and Dr. Royal Lee is a genius. He's a dentist first off and uh, he he was very adamant about pure nutrition. Um, and he took on the likes of, you know, the white bread makers and, uh, you know, Coca-Cola companies back then in the 1930s and 40s. And so he's, uh, he needs more recognition, obviously, because he's, he's done a lot of good work. Um, Dr. Roy also worked at the Gerson Clinic in New York for 10 years as a house physician. And uh, in the latter part of his career, he just uh, practiced naturopathic oncology. I remember one of the first things he said to me when I graduated in 1990 was, David, what you learned in nutrition in school, that's not nutrition. I kind of looked at him to thought, what do you mean I just spent four years doing this? He says, nutrition, if it doesn't come from the ground, and if it's not made by Mother Nature, it's not nutrition. So all these years I was looking for nutritional stuff to give to my patients, and nothing really could be found. That's why I started this company. So that's kind of the, the background. Okay? So because we're talking about diseases of the 21st century, I thought I, I start up that topic by explaining how things are in terms of projections. Um, this is the global projections for deaths according to the World Health Organization. Uh, you can see on the top graphs here, cancers, heart attacks, and strokes are the leading causes of death worldwide, uh, going from 8 million to 12 million for cancers, and, you know, and heart attacks and strokes are somewhere behind increasing by about 30 33 percent and so it's on the climb and certainly in the next 20 years you'll see many more of these cases and on the bottom you see deaths due to uh, mostly infections acute respiratory infections perinatal AIDS and HIV TB and malaria um, but if you look at the two groups the one above had to do with diseases that are mostly in developed nations that have better hygiene, medical services, and food, uh, and yet they have greater mortality than the underdeveloped nations you see in the clusters at the bottom that have poor hygiene, that lack medical services, and have malnutrition. This suggests that our lifestyle of eating the wrong foods and not monitoring our stress uh, is certainly a, a problem in our developed nations. Okay? Um, <clears throat> so, let's talk about whole foods. Evidence shows that eating fruits and vegetables are protective against development of chronic diseases. One, well, that's an acceptable statement. This one is <coughs> a more bolder statement. It says basically that one serving increase uh, per day of vegetables and fruits equals a 20% reduction in all-cause mortality. That, that means that whether you have uh, a genetic predisposition to a disease that you inherited from your parents or that you're currently dealing with a chronic disease, if you ate one more serving of fruits and vegetables a day, your, your risk to death to that disease decreases by 20%. This suggests that not only do foods protect and heal, but they, they potentially could prevent and, and actually reverse diseases. 
Um, <clears throat> so let's talk about cancer and cardiovascular diseases. The emission rate from chemotherapy is about 2.1% in Australia and 2.3% in the U.S. Okay, that's dismal given the billions and trillions of dollars that have been spent in the chemotherapeutic industry uh, in the last several decades. Carcinogen therapy, on the other hand, that uses large quantities of fresh organic juices, we're talking 13 fresh glasses of juices a day, um, plus vegan meals, plus Australian coffee. Does anyone know what Australian coffee is? It's a, it's a good way of saying that it's Inanimous. coffee in us. Yeah, it's no. co coffee down under. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's just my way of calling it. But I, I went and did the, um, the practitioner's uh, intensive program last year in San Diego with the Gerson group. And, uh, I got to see people who were healed 20, 30 years ago from pancreatic cancers, liver cancers, brain cancers, multiple myelomas. Um, cancers that typically have very little, very low prognosis. Um, and I was very impressed. And at the time when Dr. Gerson had his clinic in New York, he had about an 80% success rate. And these people were typically inpatient facilities that, that would go in there for a year, two years, and do the program. And so when we look at our foods right now in terms of the phytonutrients, you have <coughs> natural chemicals found in your plants that have antioxidant uh, effects that, that have immunopotentiating effects that repair DNA and RNA when they become damaged. They have anti-angiogenic um, properties. So what that means is the difference mainly between your benign and your invasive cancer is that your invasive cancer can put out these chemicals called uh, angiogenic chemicals that allows it to grow uh, basically capillaries that um, would uh, shut the nutrients and oxygen to the cancer so it will grow faster and divide and invade. That's the difference. And in your foods like your tocopherols and your catechins and your green tea and resveratrol, they have these anti-angiogenic effects that prevent the growth of these capillaries. Right? This is powerful stuff. The cancer industry is trying to duplicate this and yet it's all in our foods. Catechins cause apoptosis, so cell death in cancer cells, inhibit estrogen synthesis, detoxify hormones, reduce carcinogens, inhibit growth of cancer cells, etc. Okay? And I'll talk about cardiovascular disease. This is directly out of Dr. Esselstyn's book on prevent and reverse heart disease. On the left, you see an angiogram that's, <clears throat> for the most part, plugged up, right? You see the, the blockage there. And this person <coughs> has switched over into a 32-month th um, dietary change into a, a plant-based diet and uh, and after 32 months um, the angiogram of the same area showed that there was a complete reversal. What's interesting is that although this is quite dramatic, what's more interesting is that this is a systemic approach. It's not the bypass where you just go and locally switch from one path to the other in terms of doing the bypass surgery but we're dealing with the whole body. My uh, uncle, who's been a, a medical doctor for 50 years, who had a terrible diet of, of basically uh, either a lobster or a filet mignon every night for dinner for the past 60 years, had a heart problem. Went to Ottawa and had his bypass done. His doctor warned him, you've got a systemic problem. This is, we're just dealing with this local issue. He went back, body dots, continued with this poor diet, and you know, last year developed a, a double uh, stroke. He's now half paralyzed. And when I talked to him, he says, diet has nothing to do with, with uh, incidence of stroke. So I showed him two papers, two meta-analyses that show the link between diet and stroke incidence. And after that, I think he started to quote me and, and started to eat more vegetarian kind of style. But anyways, you know, whole foods can heal cardiovascular disease. Um, so phytonutrients, again, in our plant kingdom, we have phytochemicals that can reverse heart disease. It can decrease bad cholesterol and increase good cholesterol. It can protect, strengthen, maintain, and repair blood vessels. It can, can reduce your blood pressure or platelet aggregation, which has to do with the stickiness in your blood. It can reduce and block inflammatory pathways, and inflammation being a key factor of any pathology in the body. It can reduce oxidation and cholesterol, and, and especially of cholesterol. Cholesterol by itself is not a bad thing. It actually, cholesterol is actually an antioxidant. Did you know that? Um, so if, if you don't have any, it wouldn't be a good thing. If you have too much, it's a problem, especially when they become oxidized. So oxidized cholesterol is, a, is much worse than just cholesterol itself. 
Phenols, pectin, and soluble fibers reduce clotting, sticking, and pre preventing uh, platelets from clumping. So what is the difference between synthetic and whole food nutrients? Well, you know, going back to my practice here, the first 20 years of my practice was using solely nutraceutical products that are made synthetically. And I tell you, I had mixed results. Okay? And I'll give you a real example here. Dr. St. Giori discovered ascorbic acid in 1937 when scurvy was rampant, but he could never reverse people who had scurvy using an isolated ascorbic acid. He realized that other factors were missing. In fact, his friends would come and see him. He'd say, don't use my ascorbic acid. Here's some paprika, here's some potato. This is how you can reverse it. Because every time you use the ascorbic acid, it wouldn't work. Going back 200 years in the 1700s, um, a surgeon, um, Scottish surgeon around in the Royal Navy, Dr. James Lynn, showed that um, <coughs> actually citrus fruits like lime could reverse scurvy. Um, ships at the time going on voyages would many times be turned around because of the numbers of deaths due to scurvy. Uh, that's because we're only able to carry non-perishable foods like uh, cured and smoked meats and, and dry grains. And so they didn't have any fresh vitamin C to use and as a result um, many were, were, uh, were killed as a result of the deficiency. So what really is a, the difference between ascorbic acid? Well, ascorbic acid is actually made by, by GMO cornstarch into sorbitol, then hydrogenated, and then they use acetone to break the bonds to create crystalline ascorbic acid. So the micrograph that you see on the top left-hand corner is the crystalline ascorbic acid structures. Um, and on the bottom um, is your amorphous mass of whole food vitamin C, and that's because vitamin C uh, made by Mother Nature is naturally occurring with all its different components. So whole food vitamin C complex has the ascorbic acid on the outer layer and then you have the, the biotin, the, sorry, the rutin and the bioflavonoids on the inside that acts to increase the absorption and utilization of the molecule um, that also helps with things like uh, immune support and vascular support as well. The factor J increases oxygen carrying capacity, the factor P strengthens the blood vessel and walls, and the tyrosinase helps to um, differentiate your white blood cells and to support your immune system. So if you have scurvy and you have progressive symptoms of malaise and spots in your thighs and your gums are spongy and you're starting to bleed from your mucous membranes, you had low mood depression, your wounds are starting to ooze just like my leg was you're starting to lose your teeth and flapping your gums and you're, you've got now yellowing skin and spiking temperature and racking with pain, so what would you choose? Would you choose the ascorbic acid or the natural vitamin C? Of course you go for the natural vitamin C because that's the one that's going to help you bring that oxygen to your tissues and strengthen your blood vessels and to uh, support your immune system. Right? So one of the key um, foundations of naturopathic medicine is this idea of vis, um, which means the healing power of nature. Okay? You have the vital force, or the, the energy signature in your homeopathic remedies. You have the, the Gaia principle from your herbs. Where is it on nutritional supplements? Right? Your supplements don't have that energy or the prana. Prana in Sanskrit means life. You can't really heal. Right? That's one reason why I only wanted products from Mother Nature. Okay, so just give, just to backtrack a bit, I, you know, in the 20 years, the first 20 years of my practice, I had people commonly coming in and saying, Dr. Wong, I can't take these vitamins. And typically, these are reactions to the B vitamins. And, you know, how many of you have seen reactions to B vitamins? You all have, right? And that's because your B vitamins, as I found out, they're made by drug companies typically made from petroleum byproducts, coal tar derivatives, formaldehyde, and acetone. Okay? Most of you don't know this. It's because drug companies don't want us to know this. That's why um, your customers, my patients, are having reactions to these products. That's why I'm moving away from it. Okay? In the last three years since using these products, I've had a much different set of experiences from my patients. In fact, I've reduced a, a number of my nutraceuticals in the last year, I was throwing away $10,000 from my dispensary because of the, the expiry on these synthetic products. I just tossed them out. Because my stuff, these, these, these things work a lot better. Uh, it's because the body recognizes it. It's because one of the differences has to do with the energy effect. 
and we'll talk about some of the, the other advantages. Synergy of antioxidants. Dr. Liu from the Department of Agriculture at Cornell University is probably one of the most cited researchers in agriculture. He says that no single antioxidant can replace a combination of natural phytonutrients of fruits and vegetables to achieve health benefits. Right? Uh, and that isolated phytonutrients lose their bioavailability uh, or don't behave the same way in, in whole foods. So the idea to take one single phytonutrient like sulforaphane and concentrate, to concentrate and say, hey, this is great for protecting you against cancer and taking high doses or taking huge doses of vitamin D like people are pushing nowadays, makes no sense to me. Eating a variety of foods, combining all your phytonutrients, combining all your, you know, your vitamins and minerals, is really the way to go. Because um, when you take things in isolation and concentrate it and take it in high dose, you're starting to think like the medical model. That's what drugs do. Right? Uh, and so taken out of context, we, we start to see problems. Um, The next, the next thing here, and this is further emphasis of the synergism idea, that combination of herbs uh, with green tea can synergistically enhance antioxidant activity. This is from a, a, a published study from 2011. Another one that I came across recently had to look, had to, 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 to show the, the same synergistic idea that if you had this much antioxidant, anti-angiogenic property from jasmine tea, and you see the same thing in Sancha tea, when you combine the two, ash is greater than the sum of the two. Right? So one plus one in this case is more than two. Um, so that's, that's how foods work. And then another advantage to these products is that there's a built-in enzyme delivery system. This is um, Dr. Bill Bell's work, who's a cell and molecular biologist from the Rockefeller University of New York who received his Nobel Prize for his discovery of peptide signals. And essentially what he says was that you have these nutrients that are bound to these enzymes that act as a courier system. And once your body takes it in, it goes directly into your cells, crosses a cell membrane, and goes right to your cell organelle. So <clears throat> when you have taken that juice with the bees, Typically, in half an hour, I'll be asking how many of you feel more energized, and probably 20% of you will feel that because of this very mechanism. The body recognizes it because of this enzyme. Now, in oncology, drug companies are trying very hard to do the same thing. They're trying to combine the chemotherapeutic agent to an enzyme delivery system so as to target you know, brain cancers and liver cancers and so on. That would be the ideal, but billions of dollars they spent trying to do this in decades of time that they, they spent doing this, they haven't been able to do what Mother Nature can do. See? And that's why <clears throat> we respect Mother Nature for what she does. We just harvest it from the ground, process it through air, light, and water, mill it down to powder, and put in the bottles. Okay? Because some of these things just can't be duplicated in the lab. So let's switch gears a bit and just talk about stress. Um, and so the reason why we, we talk about the nutrient issues and the whole phytonutrient thing mm -hmm. is we're talking about nutrient deficiency as being an issue and that really there's not a lot of products that I've come across out there that, that are whole food based. Yes, it's green products, but there's no supplements that has a list of A to Z and B's and so on and so forth that are made from food. And that's why I created this. So nutrient deficiency being one issue, the other issue has to do with stress when we're talking about 21st century um, diseases. So 75 to 95 percent of all doctor um, office visits are stress-related ailments and complaints. So I would say closer to 95 percent of my patients come in with uh, adrenal issues. Uh, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration states that stress is uh, responsible for about 300 billion dollars um, a year of cost in, in, in relationship to stress. Uh, the lifetime prevalence of emotional disorder is more than 50% due to chronic stress. So what was my criteria in terms of um, making these things? I'm sorry I'm sort of switching around a little bit, but there's a criteria in, in which I was um, making these things, and that is that um, I, I wanted things that didn't have any USBs. Um, I wanted it to be organic plant-based vegan, want to be raw and bioactive. 
want to be hypoallergenic. Um, I, obviously, I wanted the enzyme delivery system. And, and so we have pure foods. Um, and when I say pure foods, I'd like to differentiate our products from the whole food products out there. Um, that's going to be one of the common questions that your customer is going to be asking you is, what is the difference between this product and the whole food products out there? Well, the main difference is that, number one, we don't have any USBs. And number two, we don't have a bruise yeast. Um, when I first started this in 2007, there were <coughs> raw material suppliers who were telling me about this, you know, this this high tech yeast technology where you grow this thing, you get your your vitamins from there. And the more I inquire about it, the more I didn't want to do it because I found out that essentially you have this growing medium in this big vat, and you grow your meat, you bruise yeast in there, and then you throw in the USPs. To, to, to increase the vitamin and mineral level. And typically, the saturation rate is about 20% for vitamins and less than 5% for minerals. So beyond 5% for minerals or beyond 20% for vitamins, the booze yeast will start to die off. And I want to keep it alive in order to have it incorporate these nutrients before they process these things. And so I have a few issues with this. Number one, it uses USPs, obviously. Number two, the mineral count is just way too high for my my needs uh, in terms of what I need uh, in a clinical setting. Number three, I just don't like to give breweries these to a candida sensitive individual, which is quite a common problem. And number four, um, breweries these can now become a superbug. So in the presence of your probiotic gut bacteria, it's going to force it to mutate, much like your MRSA in a hospital setting with the overuse of antibiotics. These things will mutate in order to try and survive. And now breweries these can do the same in the gut. Okay. Um, and so these things are, um, our products are different um, because they are completely made from food without the yeast. So um, moving on with stress, stress, I, by the way, I, I, you know, I do a public talk on stress and it's usually about an hour to an hour and a half long. So I'm just kind of condensing that here and relating to the product line here because a lot of it is used for adrenal support. Um, but, you know, essentially stress is a, a major problem because medical doctors don't treat for it. They don't look for these problems. And yet, you know, 95% to 100% of your consumers coming through your store are going to have stress-related problems. Um, and so they're going to have symptoms like fatigue and weight gain and slow metabolism and chronic inflammation and low mood depression and chronic inf infections and so on and so forth. Uh, and this line will be ideally suited to helping these people. Okay, so Pure Food A to Z is made from 30 different fruits, vegetables, and grasses. Feel free to just pass this around, please. Um, and uh, contains 23 of the essential vitamins and minerals, plus the fiber, cofactors, coenzymes, and phytonutrients. Phytonutrients are the unsung heroes. You know, given what I just told you about, they're the ones that are going to reverse disease. So it's one thing to say, I've got my macronutrients like your proteins, fats, and carbohydrates, and you know, I'm taking my essential vitamins, popping these pills, but it's another thing to say that you're taking enough of the phytonutrients to protect and reverse disease. Okay? In the 21st century, you know, I, I think that the new medicine will be the phytonutrients. Um, so this product is a really good nutritional background for people with tired adrenal glands. Dose is typically one teaspoon to three tablespoons a day. If you're using one teaspoon, this bottle will last you four and a half months. If you're using one tablespoon, it will last you one and a half months. Um, and most people just take maximum one tablespoon. You don't really need that much. Again, because it's food it absorbs a lot better. It uh, took me about five years to develop this formula because I, I needed to find the right balance and the right sources to get the, all the vitamins and minerals um, in place. And I, I wanted a formula that's also very low in iron so that kids could take it. A lot of mothers come in complaining that their kids are not taking enough fruits and vegetables and I want this formula to be ideally suited for them. So it's great for them um, from as young as one year old all the way up to the elderly. So it's a good, uh, good product for that. Um, Pure Food B, uh, this is one of the products that you took in your sample here. It uh, contains the lemon, guava, holy basil, and blue-green algae. So it has a full complement of your B1 all the way to B12. 
and um, and obviously B5 is really required by the adrenal glands when it's depleted.